Growing out of a shallow pot stands a mighty tree, nature in miniature. This is the art of bonsai. The tradition of bonsai dates back over a thousand years in Japan. Because bonsai plants can take decades or more to create, they are seen as symbols of the ceaseless march of time. The finest examples are considered living works of art. Nature's life force molded by human ingenuity. Bonsai captures the essence of the changing seasons. This centuries-old pastime is continuing to evolve into new forms in contemporary Japan. On this edition of Begin Japanology, we explore the long tradition and exquisite skills of this fascinating art form, bonsai. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. Today I'm visiting a bonsai nursery come museum in Tokyo. This magnificent bonsai here is a pine that's about 500 years old. In the wild, it would have grown into a massive tree, but even in its miniaturized bonsai form, it has a majesty that's in keeping with its several centuries of existence. The word bonsai is written with two characters, bon being a shallow dish or tray, and sai means to cultivate a plant. But not all plants grown in pots can be called bonsai. Bonsai are pruned and trained meticulously over many years to create an appearance that's both natural and picturesque. In our first video, we'll take a look at various types of bonsai and also look at some of the essential points for appreciating them. Tending plants has long been a popular pastime for people in Japan. There are an estimated one million bonsai enthusiasts, most of them senior citizens. Creating beautiful plants that slowly develop over the years from small seedlings. That is the attraction and pleasure of bonsai. Exceptional examples of bonsai are the fruit of countless years of care and attention by skilled craftsmen. They can command prices in the millions or tens of millions of yen. And yet, bonsai is also a pastime that anyone can embrace. Even people who don't have large gardens raise bonsai on shelves in front of their houses, chatting about their creations and sharing tips with their neighbors. From the everyday bonsai of amateur enthusiasts to high-priced specimens regarded as magnificent artworks, the practice of bonsai in Japan can be enjoyed on many different levels. A wide range of plants can be cultivated as bonsai. The most common type are pines. Five needle pines, black pines and red pines. These evergreen conifers form one of the most important genres in the field of bonsai. Hardy and easy to cultivate, these trees are prized because they stay green throughout the year. In addition, their bark develops a venerable appearance that is considered highly attractive. Deciduous broadleaf trees such as maple and zelkova are also popular because their appearance changes with the seasons. They sprout fresh foliage in spring, develop rich green leaves in summer, and then display their reddish tints in autumn. Bonsai like this reflect the passage of the seasons in Japan. Trees and shrubs that flower, such as azaleas or Japanese apricots, are also cultivated this way. Their seasonal blossoms make a cheerful contrast with the pines and other bonsai that just display their leaves. Species that produce fruit are considered a separate genre of bonsai. Usually the fruit appear late in the autumn or early in winter. They add a splash of color in the bleak cold months.
Bonsai must be carefully trained so that they take on the appearance of trees growing in the wild. Within the confines of their small pots, it's possible to recreate the majestic look of natural scenes. Bonsai that are trained to grow downwards from their pots are known as kengai, or cascade-style bonsai. Although they may seem unnatural at first, trees like this can be found growing in the wild. Cascade-style bonsai evoke wild pines clinging to sheer cliffs by their roots, weathering gales and blizzards. When a bonsai has several trunks growing from a single root, this is known as kabudachi, or clump style. This tree, a variety of Japanese maple, is 150 years old, and its roots now fill the entire pot. This style of bonsai evokes the groves of trees that can be seen growing in many areas of Japan. In this example, the roots of a maple have been trained around a small rock, a style known as ishizuki, or rock planting. This particular bonsai stands 60 centimeters high. It evokes scenes of full-size trees with their roots entwined around boulders in deep ravines or on craggy coastlines. Bonsai are nature in microcosm, representing in miniature the splendid scenes found in the wild. Time is an essential aspect in their cultivation. Like antiques, they grow in value the older they become. This renowned 450-year-old pine has been given the name Higurashi. The name suggests it is so superb that people would gaze at it all day until dusk falls. Part of the trunk is a bleached white colour. Although the wood is dead, it has not rotted away. Because it looks a bit like old bones, this was traditionally thought to evoke sacred relics of the Buddha. This effect, known as shari, is greatly prized. Kunio Kobayashi has been cultivating bonsai for 30 years. Among the trees he tends is this Shimpaku juniper that is almost 1,000 years old. The brown parts of the trunk, known as Mizusui, are still alive and can draw up water. The Mizusui and Shari portions are intertwined, forming a single whole. The coexistence of death and life in a single tree trunk creates a powerful contrast, an effect found only in venerable bonsai of this type. I suppose that ultimately the spirit of bonsai is life itself. You can really feel the life force. Because when you look at a bonsai, a tree that is 500 years old, you can really feel that this is a 500-year-old life. It's something that's very deep and dignified. That's what bonsai has taught me. Cultivating bonsai is much more than just appreciating the look of individual trees. It's an appreciation of the beauty of nature. Bonsai have a deep inner beauty and inspire a sense of the passage of time. That is what makes them living works of art. These days there are bonsai aficionados all over the world and some of them even come all the way to Japan to learn the art. Hello. Hello. This is Peter Warren from England. I understand you've been here seven years now. Yep, that's right, about seven years. Did you come specifically to study bonsai? Uh, no, um, I originally came to watch the, uh, the World Cup in uh, 2002. And uh, when I was here, I sort of I found bonsai and fell in love and that was it. What was the appeal of bonsai for you? Is it easy to put into words? Um, well, the original appeal was uh, just, uh, it was a, an incredible, I mean, how, how on earth can these trees live in, in such a small pot? Mm. and be, be healthy and you know some of these trees are phenomenally old mm. um, that was the original appeal and then 
as my training went on, I began to become more, much more interested in techniques and it became much more of a craft. Uh, and now it's... <laughs> trees don't lie to you. Um, and that, that's an appeal to, for me. Um, mm. If you love the tree, if you, if you give it everything it needs and if you, if you really put a lot of effort into it, it will, it will show you that respect back. Uh, and f and I, that's a very important part of bonsai, I think, for me. Hmm. So, if I wanted to have a go at snipping something, okay, would that be all right? Yeah, no problem at all. all right. This tree's pretty indestructible, so you can okay. have a go. Um, <laughs> Just well, as well. <laughs> as I mentioned, what we're doing, trying to do is cut back longer sheets. So, right. for example... Uh, if you want to... Okay, this just, one's a little bit long, yeah, isn't just, it? Just come okay. up things like that. All right, so... Sorry, tree, here we go. Here we go. That wasn't too bad, was it? No. <laughs> a lot of people are very much afraid to, to cut their trees. Right. Um, but with bonsai, unless you cut them, then they don't get better. Okay. So okay. it's so a good thing. The pruning is... Uh, for example, this one, that's fairly long, isn't it? Can that safely come yeah, off? That, that, you can cut that one off, no problem. Okay. Even though these trees may be a thousand years old, to keep them healthy, the, the, the ends of the, of, the, of the leaves and the roots must be one year old. So you need to keep cutting them back and letting them grow. Oh, right. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Peter. Thank you. On our next video, we'll take a look at some of the techniques that are used in tending bonsai. <laughs> The aim of bonsai is to shape seedlings in small pots so that they come to look like trees in the wild. Various techniques are used to achieve this. You can make them whatever shape you choose. Wires are wrapped around the young branches to shape them. This is one of the fundamental techniques of bonsai. This is the method by which the plants are formed into the desired appearance. One of the pleasures of practicing bonsai is to make the trees take on an aged and weathered appearance. The ability to give a tree a wizened look is considered an indication of a bonsai craftsman's skill. In the hands of a bonsai master, an old tree can be given an even more venerable look. This tree has not been well tended and parts of the trunk and branches are rotting away. The affected areas have to be carefully cut away and polished. Next, a liquid mixture of lime sulphur is applied to prevent further rotting. This will protect the tree from insects and give it the prized bone-white shari look. The contrast between the living wood and the dead, dry shari wood has been accentuated, creating in this bonsai a clear expression of life, death and time. Some highly skilled craftsmen create unusual styles of bonsai, turning their hands to plants that are normally not used. This is a 52-year-old rose. Traditionally, rose shrubs were never used as bonsai. Because the stems of roses do not grow thicker over time, they were considered unsuitable for training as bonsai. However, rose breeder Akira Atomi has spent decades developing rose bonsai. Atomi focused on the roots of the rose shrubs because they grow much thicker than the stems. Once a year he replants each bush in such a way that their roots are lifted slightly. Before the soil came this far up, now I'm replanting it to raise the roots. When the roots are exposed to sunlight, they gradually harden. This gives them the appearance of an old tree. The innovative and highly original bonsai created by Atomi have drawn great admiration in other countries as well as in Japan. Normally, it takes many long years to train each bonsai to develop into the desired shape. But Hiromi Tsugada 
has developed a technique to accelerate the process of training branches into position. In bonsai, the balance of the branches is crucial. Using the traditional techniques, it takes decades to coax new branches to grow in the right places. But Skada gets around this by using branches taken from other trees. If he feels that a branch is needed on a bonsai to give it the right balance, he grafts on one from another plant. This technique can be used not only for adjusting the balance of the branches, but also for incorporating branches with blossoms of different colours. The final step is to fix the grafted branch in place with a screw and then let the wood fuse naturally. Using this grafting technique, a process that might take 20 to 30 years at nature's pace can be completed in a couple of years. This is an azalea that Skada grafted a branch onto. The new branch has completely fused into the trunk of the host tree. The aim of bonsai is to recreate a natural look, but this can only be accomplished through human ingenuity. Bonsai are generally kept outdoors, but they can also be brought inside sometimes to be put on special display. Sometimes they'll dis be displayed in a tokonoma, which is the special alcove that you'll find in a traditional Japanese room like this, and is used to show off artworks like a hanging scroll or flower arrangement. When a bonsai is used to decorate a tokonoma, it has to be in perfect balance with the hanging scroll and it also has to reflect the appropriate seasonal theme. For example, in this room, the hanging scroll depicts Mount Fuji in winter with snow on the cap. And down in the corner of the room, you'll see a little model of a house which represents a village perhaps at the foot of the mountain where you could easily imagine that even in the midst of winter, you'd see plum blossoms like these, telling the inhabitants that the warmth of spring is not too far away. Now, on our next video, we'll take a look at how the art of bonsai developed in Japan over the centuries. The practice of bonsai was originally introduced to Japan from China, where it is thought to date back to the Tang Dynasty, around the 7th century. Paintings inside the tomb of the son of a renowned empress include depictions of bonsai. This illustration shows a tray filled with a decorative arrangement of plants and stones. Creating scenes from nature in pots like this is thought to have been the origin of bonsai. Bonsai are thought to have reached Japan by the end of the 12th century. Initially, it was a pastime for the aristocrats and the ruling class. Picture scrolls dating from the early 14th century depict detailed renderings of pine bonsai adorning the gardens of aristocratic estates. Since the earliest times, pines have been one of the principal trees used in bonsai. They have a special significance in Japanese culture. Because pines stay green all through the winter and grow even in poor soil, they have been valued since ancient times as an auspicious symbol of immortality, reflecting people's wishes for their families to flourish. Pines feature in some of the most distinctive Japanese landscapes. The islands of Matsushima in northeastern Japan are covered in rugged conifers. Among countless other scenic spots known for the beauty of their pines is Amano Hashidate in Kyoto Prefecture. 
This spit of sand stretching 3.6 kilometers across an inlet of the sea has roughly 8,000 pine trees growing on it. Ahead of the New Year holidays, it is a tradition throughout Japan to decorate the fronts of homes and businesses with arrangements of pine and bamboo. Known as kadomatsu, these are thought to provide a welcome for the deities of the year ahead. This is an illustration of the special significance that pines hold within Japanese culture. Iemitsu, the third Tokugawa shogun, who ruled in the 17th century, was devoted to gardening and bonsai. This pine was one of his favorites. Known as Third Shogun, it is still carefully tended in the bonsai garden of the Imperial Palace in Tokyo. In Tokyo's Akasaka district, there used to be a vast garden belonging to the key branch of the ruling Tokugawa clan. This picture of that garden shows a large number of pine bonsai. By the 18th century, bonsai were no longer the exclusive preserve of the shoguns and the ruling lords. The practice soon caught on among ordinary townspeople. In Somei village, the area of Tokyo now known as Sugamo, there used to be many large nurseries lining the streets, on a scale unparalleled anywhere else in the world at that time. Woodblock prints from that era show stalls selling numerous bonsai, with townspeople gathering to buy them. Many different kinds of plants are depicted, not just pines. In the densely populated metropolis, few ordinary people had gardens of their own, but that didn't stop them from enjoying the pleasures of gardening. These days in Japan, there is still widespread enthusiasm for bonsai, from prized centuries-old masterpieces to more modest examples, small enough and cheap enough for anyone to afford. Tending and training bonsai requires considerable time and effort and because of this, aficionados tended to be older people with more free time. And this gave rise to the idea that bonsai were purely a pastime for senior citizens. However, in recent years, innovative contemporary approaches to bonsai have attracted the attention of a younger generation, as we'll see in our next video. In Tokyo's Ebisu district, a so-called bonsai bar opened recently. The interior is decorated with many of the miniature trees. The bonsai theme goes further than that. Customers can bring along their own bonsai so that they can share their appreciation with others while sipping wine. During the day, the establishment operates as a bonsai cafe. The food menu includes items such as bonsai sushi, in which sprigs of broccoli stand for pine trees and salmon roe represents pine cones. A growing number of young people are buying bonsai to decorate their living spaces. This shop sells miniature bonsai at prices that are very affordable. It's a way of adding a touch of greenery to rooms without making them feel cramped. They are easy to take care of as well. They just have to be soaked in water twice a day. Miniature bonsai like this are an accessible pleasure that young women in particular are fond of these days. To show the scale of this bonsai, the one yen coin next to it is just a centimeter across. And this one is even tinier, an incredible five millimeters across. This extreme form of bonsai is known as ultra-miniature baby bonsai. These micro bonsai are the work of Mitsuo Chishima, who lives on the outskirts of Osaka. 
Chishima defines baby bonsai as plants that are less than two centimeters high and which grow in pots less than two centimeters across. The first step in making his baby bonsai is to cultivate the plants. Chishima raises them all himself from seedlings. He clips off the tips of new sprouts and trims down their leaves. He transfers them to planting trays where he grows them for about a year until they develop proper roots. Then they are ready to be placed in pots. Of course, no one sells such tiny pots, so Chishima makes them all himself. They are his own creations, which he forms from clay using sewing needles. They retain moisture very well. Like regular sized pots, they have a hole to allow water drainage. Fired in an ordinary kiln, they are so tiny they look like specks of debris compared to the full-size pieces surrounding them. Planting each seedling requires meticulous attention. Each pot can only hold a few specks of soil. Chishima is aiming to make even tinier bonsai in the future. The delight of these remarkably creative baby bonsai is how they compress the beauty of nature into a minuscule space. It's the same principle that underlies traditional bonsai, one that seems to have an endless appeal for people in Japan. Japan has a reputation for its skill in miniaturizing everything from cars to electronics. In the same way, the art of bonsai is a way of scaling down the vastness of nature into a single small container. But on the other hand, bonsai is not just miniaturization. There's a term in bonsai, keisho sodai, which means to capture the essence of something large in a small form. Even a tiny seedling can encapsulate the character of a massive full-size tree. The art of bonsai seems to express something fundamental about the Japanese view of nature. Since ancient times, the passage of the seasons has been reflected in many aspects of Japanese culture, and our theme next time will be the Four Seasons.